Hello, Technology Crazy here, and today we are going to be covering green screening. So I've been wanting to do this for a very long time. It should be really fun. Uh, so we're going to be covering everything to do with green screening. So please stay tuned and enjoy. Okay, so we're going to be covering tons of things in this video. First, we're going to start with how to make a green screen, then moving on to uh, lighting, and then finally going on to the computer and showing you how to make a perfect chroma key or green screen, as uh, most people call it. Okay, so let's start with the green screen itself. Now you're going to notice uh, I don't have that blue background behind me. The, now this is actually what it looks like uh, for me. Basically, it's just green fabric. We usually use green for uh, green screening because you can actually subtract green without, uh, there's not very much green in the face. Uh, so green or blue, depending on what you need, um, I suggest green. Uh, basically, all I did is went to a fabric store and bought three panels of green uh, fabric and measured it out so it would fit my wall. And then we sewed it all together and we also sewed a bar on the top of the green screen so we can uh, take it down, roll it up, and it's very portable. So overall, the green screen itself just cost me about 25 bucks and that's with the metal bar. As far as lighting goes, it's very hard for me to actually show you how to set it up uh, just because it's very hard to show you a bird's eye view. So I'm going to be drawing as well as shooting you some uh, shots of how my setup is uh, just to give you a really good understanding because one of the key things you want to understand is the placement of lights. Uh, you do not want any shadows. I'm going to be showing you how to do that here. So let's pretend this is the green screen right here. Um, the two main uh, powerful lights here I have are one right there and one right here. And they're just shooting light right here just like that. Now you want to have very solid color um, and you don't want this powerful light to hit you very much. You can have a little bit pointing towards you but basically you want this to light up the green screen as much as you can, maybe not too much though, um, just to get a solid color and also not to create any shadows. Then you're up here and I would say stand about a meter or a meter half away from the green screen um, just to stop shadows from happening. You never want a powerful light right here shooting at you and then making a gigantic shadow. These are, uh, I, have a, I have a soft box here just to light up my face a little bit, as well as two lamps. These are just um, basically to light up my face and make me look a little bit more realistic. Uh, basically we have two here and they just shoot like this. They don't touch the green screen very much. They do touch it a little bit. Um, maybe not the best setup. They do recommend um, to have lights behind you, as well as maybe one over here, one over here, and pointed directly at you, so you do not hit the green screen. Because as soon as you have shadows, you're going to have a big problem. Then I also have um, some reflective surface over here and here, and I actually have another work light pointing this direction, and it's going off and hitting it off there and hitting me. Now, you don't have to do that. I just found out recently that that works very well. I used to point off the wall, so I had one over here pointing off the wall and then hitting me like that, and that works too. Um, basically, just try whatever you want. Um, try It will take you lots of times. It took me about two months to find out a really good setup that works for my room um, and with my lights. So it's something that you really have to try out. It's not something I can really tell you how to do. Uh, it's one of those things where you just have to try and expect to fail the very first few times. Okay, so the very last thing we're going to be talking about today is actually uh, chroma keying on the computer itself. So right now we're on my Mac, but basically the exact same thing on the Windows. We're going to be using a program called Adobe Premiere Pro CS5 or CS5.5 uh, just because I found that this is the best program for chroma keying. I've also heard that uh, Final Cut Pro does a pretty good job, but we're just going to be working with this. So actually I have a preset in the description, so if you want to go and download that and then export into this program or actually import, um, so it's right here, but if you if you don't want to find the preset, all you have to do under effects, make sure it's enabled, and search ultra is the settings that we're going to be using. So drag an ultra key onto your video, and here we can select our color. We want to minus the background color. Find the darkest green you can see on your screen. And you can notice it did a pretty good job, but not very good, especially if we play it. Looks horrible. So uh, what we're going to be doing is deleting this. I'm just going to be working with you uh, through a pr preset that I've already got pretty close to done. So I'm just going to drag this preset over. So once you get a really good one, you can actually right click on it and save preset. So um, like over here, once I get this perfect how I want it, I can save it as a preset. Uh, so we're going to have my preset over here, drag it over. Once again, download that from the description. Find our darkest green there. Go to matte generation. Now I normally have transparency around 28%. Uh, basically just play around with it. Um, go from zero, you can see, oh, you don't like that, so then go up till you see something that you sort of like. Uh, generally, when you're chroma keying, go to matte cleanup and turn everything down first because that is what you want to do at the very last step. Also, go to playback resolution and turn it up to full because we want to see each pixel um, in its real form. So, transparency, we want to turn up a little bit. 
Uh, we don't want to get rid of the hair, and we don't want to get rid of the face there. So we want to go down till we see my shirt's uh, pretty good there. My hair, I want all my hair there. So um, I have it around 17 uh, 21% there. So now we're going to go to highlight. I generally have it at zero, but uh, it depends on how your uh, video is. You can also have it like at 6% or so. Um, also shadow, just bring it all the way down and see, oh, I don't like that, and bring it out until you can see all your hair, but you want don't want to have too much. Uh, actually, you could have 100% shadow, but that will... I like to usually cut out a little bit of the white around my hair, so I around have about 50% or 75%. Uh, tolerance, it'll just basically... I don't know actually what it does. I just don't like it. I usually have it at zero because it changes the color of my video and I don't like that. I don't really see what it does. Um, also, pedestal, I usually have it about at 100%, but you can actually bring it down to zero and see how the background's all white. Bring that up until you see no more white and we see all my hair there. Now, um, we're gonna go to uh, choke. And we're gonna choke off, that means just subtract like a little bit, a few millimeters off uh, the video or off, off the hair. We're gonna usually have it around 7.7 7. and soften we're going to soften until we uh, like it we don't want to get too much because then it will shrink us and we don't like that uh, so I generally have it around 15% also contrast I would keep around at 50% uh, we can also go to color correction and then also uh, change the lighting of our video but I generally uh, keep it how it is but you can always uh, do that just to make it look a little bit better now if we take our background you're going to notice that it looks pretty darn good. Uh, so now we're uh, good to go. We can stick any background behind you. I suggest using blue or something similar um, because it does look a lot better in these colors. Uh, basically, I guess that comes to the end of the video. Please stay around for the Pick Me program and I hope you enjoyed. Goodbye. Anyways, the Pick Me program winner this week is that Macintosh guy, and basically he does uh, tutorials on the Mac. So I've actually looked at a few of his videos, and they actually are uh, pretty cool. So if you want to go and check out his channel, all you have to do is go and click on the Click Me button on your screen right now. Now, if you want to be part of the Pick Me program, basically that means a free shout out. All you have to do is go into my latest video and say Pick Me, and you can say it as many times as you want, and I might pick you. I guess that's all from Technology Crazy. Goodbye. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. That really helps. Um, and I guess that's all. Bye.